Hey, we're here and we're going to be uh, slapping some steaks with uh, a little bit of seasoning and uh, I'll just turn it over to Joey who's preparing our steaks for the snack time. Alright, wash your hands folks. Can't do that enough. For real. Take Montreal steak seasoning. Lord, I just thank you so much for this food, Lord. I just pray that um, the people that are at home, Lord, that they might just uh, continue running after you, find fellowship, and just uh, uh, that they just have good times with their families, Lord, and um, just bless this food under our bodies. Amen. Amen. I'm done waiting. What's up? We are back, and we are snacking. This time, we're doing some serious snacking. Say hello to Bobblehead Jesus. Bobblehead Jesus. And um, today... We slapped some ribeyes on the grill. Mm -hmm. Man, how does the other half live? The vegans? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but man, so this is our segment called uh, Best Eaten. Best Eaten. And uh, man, I already took a little bit of this and it was like perfectly good. So well done, good job. Not well done, but medium rare, which is fantastic. Mm. If you have a ribeye well done. You just shouldn't be eating ribeye. Yeah, you shouldn't be eating Go meat. back to lettuce. Go back to broccoli. We've been letting this rest for a while, good. right? So. Mm, that end right there. So good. I'm telling you. Mm. I could just be like, just give me a bunch of those little pieces. Be good. So as far as steaks go, we're talking about the best thing we've eaten. What's the best steak you've ever eaten? Mm. You asking me first? Yeah. So, on my 24th birthday, why did I take a bite right before? I don't know. That's all right. Um, 24th birthday, I'm on the island of Kauai with my parents. We go to a restaurant and they can say, order whatever you want, it's your birthday. I ordered a 36 ounce prime rib steak, this giant prime rib steak. It was more like a roast. Oh my goodness, I think I got halfway through it. I'm like, I'm done. Or was it at what kind of place? Was it a steakhouse or was it? Um, I wanna say it was like called Kiyoki's mm. in Poipu. I heard the islands have like really good beef because they, because of the soil and stuff that is on the island, you know? So the best steak that I have ever eaten was on the island of Oahu. Mm. It was in uh, the North Shore Haleiwa. But it wasn't beef. So the best steak I had was ahi tuna. Mm. It was like, and it tasted just like beef. Are we counting that though? Uh, you have to, because it takes, I mean, it's like, a, it's a steak itself, you know? And Haleiwa has those ahi tunas where it's just, it's literally raw. Yeah. But just the outside is seared and it's seasoned so perfectly. First bite, I literally like, I don't know what it was. It was like instant euphoria when I ate it the piece of ahi tuna. I was like, sail away, sail away, sail away. 
Okay. They're not gonna get that music reference. Alright. Isn't that Enya? Is that Enya? Mm-hmm. Okay, beef steak. Best one I've had is in Missoula at this place called The Depot. And Michelle and I, I would go for our anniversaries when we lived in Missoula, the first part of our marriage. And they had like a 28 ounce ribeye steak with all, you know, with everything on it. But like, it was the, just the, the softest, perfect flavor meat. I'm like, I'm like drooling right now, just even while I'm eating my steak here. Speaking of the best thing you've ever eaten, will you comment below or wherever and let us know what the best steak that you have ever eaten? And if you haven't eaten this steak, please do. I'm concerned about you. In the name of Jesus, go have a steak somewhere, right? What's the worst steak you ever had? Mom's steak. <laughs> okay. I, she won't watch this video. Wait, she does. I love you, mom. But <laughs> she just sears it. Maybe my dad was the one cooking them. And I shouldn't know it, but growing up as a kid, steaks were just rough. Yeah. The worst steak I ever had. I don't know if I should mention the restaurant. Is it local? It's an international restaurant. I hop. Out back. It's an international house of something. I hop? No. Yeah, they had steaks there one time. No, they did not. Yeah. And I had a steak there. What's with, wrong with you for ordering what? a steak at an international house of pancakes? Well, this is when I was eating low carb. And it was like, kids wanted to go get pancakes. And I was like, oh, I'll have one of those steaks and broccoli, right? It was like a piece of cardboard. But then, crazy thing about it is I got sick. Like, it was literally the cardboard that held the pancake <laughs> mix. <laughs> I was literally sick for like a week. Yeah, I'm glad you guys were able to watch us eat steak. Do you even like steak? Do you even steak, bro? Picanha? <laughs> Why are you coughing? I don't know. Something I need to know? Yeah. That's why we're in quarantine at Joey's house. If you guys have any questions, we'll be quarantined at Joey's house.
next segment is going to be a worship video um, just to give you guys an opportunity to worship at home. So check out this video. I hope you like it. I did want to talk a little bit um, today with you out of Jeremiah 29 11. A lot of you know that scripture. Um, the, the name of my YouTube channel is Bobblehead Jesus. 
this is bobblehead Jesus. So this is actually a gift from Reed Barrows. Um, he gave me this gift uh, years ago. But I was thinking about bobblehead Jesus, and and so that's the name of our channel. But um, what's interesting is is Jesus's head is moving right now. And so the question lies in: as his head moves, are you seeing him as going up and down or side to side? It's kind of a little bit of both, honestly. But it, it made me think about the glass half empty, um, half full scenario in, in the times we're in with uh, all the things that we can be afraid of, all the things that we can fear, um, and how we can seem just utterly hopeless. The question is, are you a glass half empty or glass full? And I want to lean on Jeremiah 29 11 because this is what it says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, to me, that means no matter where the glass is at, it has water in it because God's going to take care of us no matter where it's at. So the question is, is, are you in a place that you actually are trusting that God has enough in it for you? Sometimes we can dwell that, oh, I'm not going to have enough. I'm not going to have enough. There's not enough water in it. I'm not going to survive. And you can worry about all that thing, all that stuff. But honestly, God has enough in that glass for you. He has plans for you to prosper. And so is Jesus nodding? He's always nodding. He will always take care of you. That's not always a yes, but he's always nodding because he does care about you. Do you trust him in that through this season? Do you trust him in this through this pandemic? Do you truly trust him? That's what I have to ask you. Do you trust him? Do you see God is truly there for you? Or is he just there shaking his head? No, no, I don't have you. That's what I want you to think about. But I want you to know how much God loves you. Jesus is here for you. He has plans for you to prosper believe it.